Cambodia's awe-inspiring Brahma temple, Angkor Wat, a symbol of a great civilization, stands in solitary splendor. Other architectural marvels and symbols of a shared civilization, like Borobudur, Parambanan, Champasak, in different parts of Southeast Asia, all resurrect the synthesis of cultures and sensibilities. Time's inevitable ruinations, however, submerged these enduring symbols. It took hundreds of years to rediscover these magnificent monuments from impenetrable foliage and weave together the epic narratives of the resilient traders who went on foot or in small ships from different parts of India that looked east. Culture, religion and oral traditions followed their footsteps. Ramayana, Mahabharata and Jataka tales and became part of a common heritage. No bloodshed, no wars were fought to expand this intellectual and spiritual influence. However, the dynamics of colonialism and Cold War smothered these common civilizational bonds between India and Southeast Asia. To make up for the lost decades, India initiated its Look East policy in 1991. Domestic demand-driven growth created new energies and growing markets that transformed Indian industry and economy private businesses became globally competitive. The 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, provided a unique opportunity for India to develop its multifaceted relationship with member nations, both bilaterally and regionally. In 2009, India signed the FTA with ASEAN countries. It has a comprehensive economic cooperation agreement, SICA, with Singapore and Malaysia. A similar pact is being negotiated with Indonesia and others. These agreements mark a paradigm shift in India's economic relations with Southeast Asia. ASEAN holds great promise. It has an unfolding treasure of resources, solid infrastructure, stable governments and established regulatory mechanisms. The country's vibrant corporate sector has added dynamism to this relationship. Not only capital, skills, professional competence, but their courage to experiment and take risks is evident in diverse sectors ranging from steel to Ayurveda. Indian IT companies have set up ventures and are providing key networking capabilities to these countries. Indian companies have invested extensively in the chemical and textile sector. Recron, a subsidiary of Reliance Industries and Aditya Birla Group, have become leaders in polyester and synthetic yarn. There is a great potential for ASEAN to invest in India too. Maxis of Malaysia has invested substantially in the telecom sector in India. Malaysia Airport Authority has collaborated with GMR India for building airports in Delhi and Hyderabad. UEM through its subsidiary PLUS is building two expressways. India offers uh, a very good opportunity because uh, India has uh, uh, great plans in terms of trying to develop their infrastructure development. So we feel that we can bring in our expertise and experience uh, and leverage on the demands that is required in India. SEMCORP of Singapore has a joint venture with Indian partners to build docks and shipyards. On the other hand, India's expertise in railways is being sought in Indonesia and Malaysia. Companies like Ircon are executing high-value projects. The Indian government is actively supporting the Narrowing the Development Gap initiative of ASEAN with less developed countries like Cambodia, Myanmar, Lao PDR and Vietnam or popularly known as CLNV countries. It has offered to build schools, run entrepreneurship development centers and set up centers for English language training. We still need your expertise in many things because in developing countries, especially education and language, we need your help. ASEAN has benefited immensely by India's knowledge base in the agriculture sector. Indian education, you know, to me, I think very strong compared to us, you know. And even now, I don't think we have uh, any institute or university, you know, strong like the institute that I came from, uh, from Delhi, you know, very strong one. That is uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, you know, we call PUSA Institute. Indian companies are processing agro-products like cashew, spices, sugar and others. 
Predictably, massive investments have boosted the economy and created large-scale employment opportunities. The Archaeological Survey of India is providing critical skills to preserve classical works of art and architecture like Angkor Wat and Ta Prom. It is a complex job in extremely trying circumstances, but the finesse, patience and professionalism of the job done has come in for high praise. Together with India, ASEAN as a bloc has the potential of becoming one of the largest markets in the world. Indeed, with better connectivity and lesser controls, India's engagement with ASEAN can make a beautiful dream come true. A seamless road and rail link from India to Hanoi. This will spur trade and tourism and revive a synthesis of people and creative ideas that has survived through hundreds of years. Truly, this is Asia's time.